680 grand for a one better first home buyer. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your Steiner coffee and let's have a look at this domain article discussing, well, a first home buyer who paid, of course, above reserve, of course, above reserve, and over $680,000 for a one bedroom apartment down in Sydney. Now, before we have a look at that, let's just jump over here. And this is the SQM data. And we can see here, this all units, look at that, how it's trending down. Now it's trending down. And recently we looked at some investors even giving discounts of up to 15% to offload on their units in Sydney. And if we look at Sydney, it's not really an equal environment, is it? I'll bring up here, this is the, well, this is the house values. And you can see in Sydney, a house value is at 866,000, the median value. We can see the month on month change, it's trending down. And these are the figures over the last 12 months. But if we also jump to, let's jump over to, we'll go to the Property Council data room. Property Council. There we go. And it would come up. And we'll have a look at just the median price for units around the country. Because 681, that's, well, to me, that feels like a fair bit. That's more than, you know, you could, you get a house much cheaper than that here in Queensland. I mean, have a look there. Queensland, 500 grand is the median price for a house. So median residential unit value in Sydney is at 712,000. So it's even above the median there. Here in Brisbane, 390. Look at houses, Sydney, 935. So this data is older than what we're looking at in the other chart, but it still shows just how inflated Sydney is. How, oh, oops, sorry, I didn't mean to bring up that unemployment chart, <laughs> but it is relevant, isn't it? It really is relevant. We can just see here, I'll just bring up, my property prices you can see how much they've grown so i thought it'd be good to have a look at well particularly with the state of the current economy this article about someone who who was brave enough to pay over 100 grand above reserve for a little one better right now in sydney when well we know how the economy is going everyone unemployment is at all-time highs job ads are struggling to recover You've got whole sways of the economy locked down. GDP is the worst. That, well, GDP has fallen more than it has since the Great Depression. But of course, now's the time to buy. Now's the time to buy. We'll have to see. People have their reasons. People have their reasons. Maybe he couldn't wait. Maybe he couldn't wait. So let's have a look at this article. Sydney auctions. Oh, and someone, before we get into this, someone sent me a, a snapshot where... Victoria had a 100% clearance rate at their auctions. One. One. I'll have to look at that in another video because it just shows you just how how much their real estate sector there has, is suffering. How much of a hit it's taken. I mean, just look at this. Look at how they're all standing outside. They're sure there are ways you can manage the risk, but not in Victoria. So a first home buyer paid 681000 on Saturday for a one-bedroom Gleb apartment. Attract, and attra that attracted registration from a whopping 21 bidders. The 76.5 square meter apartment at 5, uh, 15 2 Forsyth Street drew an even bigger crowd of about 50 people socially distanced, of course, outside the apartment by the Blocks Veggie Patch. And before we go through this article anymore, let's jump and have a look. So we can see here, look at the photos. I mean, this is lovely. It's, it's definitely renovated. They've got the nice uh, timber floor there on top of the slab. You've got a nice little balcony there. You know, so it, it's, I can see it looks quite quite comfortable with trees looking out. You've even got, got some glimpse of views. I had one real estate friend to advertise views. You know, you kind of get up on a chair and hold the camera there. Anything you can to get an emotive response. And a nice, they've refurbished the kitchen, they've redone the bedroom, so they've put money into it, they've dressed it up. You know, there's, there's, I mean, that's a beautiful kitchen, I love that kitchen, if you see some of the older ones that you have up here in Queensland. Get a nice, good mirrors, mirrors to the wardrobe to really great, create more light. And, I mean, you've got a pool there, you've got a body corporate, and here's the thing, she's an older building. It's an older building. So could this be to do with the fact that, well, one thing we have in Sydney is the complete and utter lack of confidence in the newer stock. If you can go with something that potentially has uh, foam cladding on the outside, that potentially has a 
fire cladding risk, would you do it? And I've just brought up Google Earth here to show everyone. And I've got here construction issues. This is where I'm showing, you know, all just some of the buildings I've tracked over the last couple of years here in Sydney with the apartment construction issue. And I call this a triangle of fail here between Sugar, Mascot, and Zetland. And there's just a whole sort, lot of issues in this area. And there's ground contamination issues as well. So if you're looking at something, I can understand why you might want to look at something a bit older. Any of the defects would have already manifest. Any of the latent conditions would have manifest. You want to get a dilapidation building pest inspection as well under the slab at the roof. You want to look for water leakages. You want to look around the the pools and wherever you can in all the little hidden nooks and crannies for potential for concrete cancer. Things that are going to cost you significant because when you buy into one of these things, you are buying into the little little simulated socialist utopia that is a body corporate and you're incurring all the potential costs. So I mean, there you go. So I, I actually don't mind uh, the brick on apartment buildings. It adds a level of, of uh, well, haptic scale to it. So it's more sensory when you touch on it. And it, it, it's nicer on the eye. Some of them, the more modern ones, like we went and had a look down. We ran the Gold Coast yesterday and we drove past the old Com Games uh, apartments. Actually, I should, I should bring up a picture of that. I really should because they look look horrible. Gold Coast. Because they're all for sale now. North Games Village. Let's see what images we can bring up. I mean, there you go. You can see it's... it's. I mean, what would you rather? Multicolored. It's really, really dated. It's really dated. Well, you've got something here, here which is you know, a little bit more classic. A little bit more classic and all of this painted fc and stuff yeah it's gonna age so what else do we have so we've got a nice little floor plan here we've got a living space a dining space a little bedroom that's separate so it's not a studio it's not a studio and a parking space but remember nearly 700 grand everyone 700 grand and we've got an advertisement for colorbond steel so there you have it guys it's sold so it's under offer now it's under offer now it was one of 522 homes scheduled to go under the hammer in Sydney on Saturday. By evening, Domain Group recorded a preliminary clearance rate of 64.7% from 430 reported properties. Now notice this. Notice how there's 100 properties not reported. This is an issue. There's always a bias towards a more positive result, a higher clearance rate than in actuality, because just of the nature of real estate agents, they're gregarious salespeople, so they're not going to tell you if they fail. They're not going to tell you if they fail. Withdrawals are counted as unsold properties when calculating the clearance rate. Bidding for the Inner West property opened at 540000 with competitive bids from 10 parties who threw their hats in the ring. The active buyers, mostly first home buyers and some investors, raised the price in varying increments 10, 5, and 1,000 at the point at the end of the sale. The apartment sold for 681116 above reserve, everyone. To first home buyers from the Sutherland Shire. Bell Property Balmain selling agent Lindsay Kemp said they knew from the moment they opened the doors to the entry-level entry level home that they had a lot of interest. And this is an entry-level home, $680,000. This just shows you how crazy the property market is in Sydney how crazy it is in Sydney. Now, I don't know why. I mean, I honestly, I like this apartment. This is a nice one. I like the plan. It's a, it's a great little one better. It's a good stepping stone in your life. But it's a unit, it's not a house. So you're gonna grow out of it real quick. You're gonna grow out of that real quick. You know, probably for a young couple, maybe one child, but then you know, maybe you could kind of build a little, get rid of the dining room and build a little nursery there, but you'll grow out of this. You'll grow out of it. And then you've got the body corporate fees. You've got the sinking fund. At least the garden's well maintained. But why would you jump in it now when you've got JobKeeper propping up the how many businesses? When you've got trading while insolvency extended until December. When you have when you have job, uh, job seeker bonus. In, and you've got a tourism industry hit. You've got border lockdowns hit. I mean, would the reason why someone would jump in now rather than wait... Rather than wait till 
The mortgage holidays disappear as well in March just to secure a physical asset. Could that be why? Is that the reason why? And I put that to you. Because some people are, are uh, concerned that there may be hyperinflation and then at least a physical asset, either precious metals or property. And Australia's property obsessed. Most people are going to default to property. Could that be why you jump in now? Or maybe it's just someone needs somewhere to live and they want a little one better. And then they're afraid of going near the newer stock. That could be the other thing. I mean, that that's we've got to remember that as well. This is going to have, because just the aesthetic from the age of the building, and you can see there's no alu uh, aluminum composite anywhere that I can see. Doesn't look like it. No foam on there, no rendered foam. Some of these are, towers are just rendered foam. It's 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 pretty pathetic, really. So that's going to be a point of difference too. So we've had 336 groups through the campaign, Ms. Kemp said. It was really competitive, and I think that proves there's a lot of stock at that price point. Interest rates are so low, it's a good time for first-term buyers to get into the market. See, so she's just basing it on interest rate. And I'm suggesting there may be more reasons why people, investors, need to pull out. But then the counter-argument is, well, Florian, if we get hyperinflation, it's best to lock away your money. Ms. Kemp said the property had a price guide of between 515 and 565. It did so well beyond everyone's expectations, and the vendor's reserve was 565. It last sold for 125,000 in 89. The agent said the suburb's median unit price is 910,000. Domain data shows. In Kuji, a three-bedroom apartment in original condition, at 130 Brook Street attracted a crowd of 50, including nine registered bidders. Bidding opened at 1.3 million as four buyers, including an online bidder through their hats in the ring. After more than a dozen bids, the hammer fell at 1.45 million, with the apartment selling for 190,000 above reserve to local downsizers. The agency's eastern suburbs selling Bernadette Summers said it was a strong result. It is a standout result. It needs a lot of work. It's been in the same family for 50 years. It's ready for a transformation. She said there are plenty of buyers in the market that are, are suave. Buyers are here and people want to purchase. Buyers are very suave and they've done their research. They're very price sensitive at the moment because of the conditions we're living under. Having that, having said that, when they see value, they compete for it. The property last traded for 29000 in the 70s. Well, there you go. In Wagaru, a three-bedroom cottage at 54 Edwards Road also drew a crowd of 50, including five registered bidders. Bidding for the property opened at 1.1 million, rising in small increments at the start as four of the buyers vied for keys to the house. I mean, this is the thing. This auction is designed uh, completely to get you emotionally invested and get the fear of missing out, literally. I mean, think about it. If you'd miss out on that, that apartment you want just for another grand, if I just had to throw another two grand on it, I could have got it. That's the thing. That's to push it even higher and higher and higher. That's why I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad it isn't as popular here in Brisbane. A retiree from the south coast placed a 100,000 bid towards the end, taking the price to 1.3. In the end, it sold for 1.4, 150 above its reserve price, to a local family upsizing from an apartment. Ray White, up at North Shore, selling agent Rowan uh, Lazar said the limited number of homes on the market was holding prices up. The main reason prices were uh, where they are is because there is extremely low supply, he said. Well, that's the thing. There's low supply at the moment. You've got to look at all of the market interventions that are keeping properties from forced sales. Could that be it? So, I mean, maybe someone is emotionally invested. They want to secure something, lock something in. But... Maybe it's just the news that I'm consuming and what I'm looking at that I'm thinking, why wouldn't you wait a few months? Rent's getting cheaper. Or maybe people are like me. When we had a uh, Mina, you know, and then we were expecting another, we needed to get a house, we needed to find something bigger, and that's just part of the challenge. So, in the more conservative markets, like the upper North Shore market, if they're not motivated, then they are not listed. We only have 10 to 12 selling weeks left until Christmas. And I can't see a significant number, uh, and I can't see a significant number of properties hitting the market. See, this is the thing: are they hoping to just keep kicking the can, the property can, down the road? And I'm here. I'm talking about the government. 
so that we can go into next year and then hopefully hopefully everything will go good again good again so the 712 square meter block last sold for 825 in 2013 the suburban median house price was 1.9 in outlands a socially distanced crowd of 60 including seven registered buyers turned up to watch seven strathblin drive go under the hammer bidding open for the four bedroom house at 2 million below the price guard of 2.4 i mean this is the thing everyone these houses that we're seeing here they're well above the median the, you know the median's 866 this is 2.4 it's above the median the other one over 1.3 is above the median for all of sydney but i guess that doesn't really matter when you're looking at specific areas and houses well then you don't have the problem you don't have the problem and the fear of the apartments yeah you don't have the fear of the apartments the hammer fell at 2.62, selling 220 above reserve to a young family upsizing from a nearby suburb. Lang plus Simmons Oates and Carlingford selling agent Daniel Maud said it was a standing result. Within Oates, there's not so much supply. There's a lot of demand for homes there. The property last sold for 919 grand in 2010. Records show the price more than doubled in a decade. Property always goes up, everyone. The median house price in the suburb is 1.4. So there we have it, everyone. A few cases, some positive spins about property. What do you think? What do you think about the little first home buyer unit for 680 grand? Would it be something you'd jump on? Or, you know, are you waiting to see what happens? Let us know in the comments. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you're a fan and want to support the content I create here, there are a few ways you can. You can join the channel on YouTube or Patreon. You can support us using our affiliate links at Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or KuCoin. You can buy a merch from Heiser Says, use Gold Pass from the Perth Mint, or support us via PayPal. Take care, and I'll see you next time.